Guests arriving for the fundraiser. Beautifully dressed, they walk into the equally beautifully decorated hall. Before the commencement of the main event, a cocktail with music to spice while the old boys of Igobi College and their guests unwind and network. Gradually, the main hall gets filled as more guests and dignitaries including the Speaker of Nigeria's House of Representatives and the Vice President Yemiyo Shimbajo, themselves old boys of the school, arrive. Today marks an important watershed in the history of our dear alma mater, Igbubi College. As we gather to make an audacious bid to raise a princely sum of one billion naira in a determined drive to contribute her humble quota to the infrastructural and academic development of the great college that laid foundation of whatever we are today. Yes, we are here for that serious business, but it is also an occasion to look back at their boyhood days, the mischief the nicknames and how Igobi College eventually shaped them. Who else is qualified to reveal the nickname of the Vice President Emil Shimbajo than the President of his Old Boys Association, who is here urging him to contest for Nigeria's presidency in 2023 on behalf of all the Old Boys? In North America, the The Vice President and Speaker Gwajabi Amila seated side by side are apparently enjoying the night together and their mood does not in any way prepare the crowd for the quip that the two will eventually launch at each other as Bajabi Amila, a lawyer who fully understands the implication, takes the first shot. I was listening to, I think it was, I don't know who it was that was talking about, acknowledging the Methodist Girls, Queen's College Association, the Reagan Association, and the vice president was twitching. You could see it was, he was, he had this nostalgia, this feeling of, and I was like, I just murmured on my breath, Mr. Vice President, calm down. <laughs> How many here are registered to vote? How many? Show of hands. I can count about 30 people here with their hands up. Mr. Vice President. How do you intend to do this? Half of the, they're not, they're not, they're not registered. I'm going to leave that to you. This is one school that I cherish. I'm so happy to have been a part of this school. Um, in Igobi, I had met a lot of, a potpourri of uh, different types of people. They had slim, fat, tall, vertically, vertically challenged. No, Mr. Vice President, not you. <laughs> Be sure that Oshimbajo himself, a professor of law, will not go without taking what I call a judicial notice of such jibe, though he admits Speaker Bajabi Amila as a saving grace for the night. The Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, and his lovely wife, my sister, Mrs. Salamatu Wajabia Mila, who is your savior today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as I heard the Right Honorable Speaker 
tearing me apart. The only nostalgia I felt was that, well, think of the good old days. I was in Form 5, was in Form 1. I mean, think what I would have... Think what I could have, think what I could have made of him on a night like this back there in Mbobi. I'd have just said, Bajabi Amila, go to the lawn. That's the lawn between Agri and Townsend. Kneel down there, put up your hands, close your eyes, and I'll go to sleep. <laughs> I'll hear of him again till the next morning. <laughs> but character and achievement were always celebrated. And I made my closest friends in Ibobi, and our friendships came from all manner of circumstances, and so many who are here today. But I had a friend, I, I have a friend, Adia Shekun, who became possibly my closest friend. Is now the ambassador, uh, the Nigerian ambassador in Canada. I met him for the first time on the queue in front of the library, the library, and we saw a picture of that library. We saw that library uh, just a moment ago. And a quarrel started right there. We were queuing up, and I can't remember exactly what happened. He either stepped on my foot or I stepped on his foot or something. And then we decided right there. Everyone gathered around as soon as those things were happening. And we decided that we had to go and settle it with a fight. <laughs> so there's a place that we used to fight at that time. There's a particular place. I can't exactly remember the name of the place. I can't remember the name, but anyway. So we were there, we were going there to go and have this fight. And as we walked down there, we met with another uh, colleague of ours in uh, class two, uh, class one at the time. Fire Miwo. So Fire Miwo, for some reason, maybe, I, I, don't even, I don't even know exactly why, spoke to us and dissuaded us from fighting and said, look, why do you want to go and fight? Why do you want to go and beat yourselves up? Why? You know, of course, we had no real reason. So, and I wasn't sure whether he will give me a beating or whether I will give him a beating. So I just thought, well, I think it's just better to let the matter rest. And since then, of course, since uh, Form 1, we've been great friends since then. To maintain such high values, solid teachers, teachers of character were required. And simply, these teachers were not impressed with anything but performance and good behavior. Despite the nevery, they still turned out noble in line with the vision of the founders of the school and now they feel they owe the next generation of students nothing less. That is why they won't be investing their fund raised from here on bricks and mortar alone. With all the money we want to raise, we want to try and create an environment, a physical and emotional environment, uh, which would help the young boys to do the things that they're supposed to do as noble Nigerians, as we say. Beyond raising the money, the Igbobi old boys are hoping that their gesture at giving back to the school that has produced leaders for yesterday, today and tomorrow will encourage other old students to support their alma mater and help revive the dying educational standard in public schools across Nigeria. Tokumbo, Oyetuji, Arise News, Lagos.